listening and watching the We Are West Ham podcast live from sunny Bonn in Germany, ahead of West Ham's Europa League quarterfinal first leg away at Bayer Leverkusen on Thursday night. I am joined by a German podcaster, all round good guy Kevin, and of course, Bayer Leverkusen super fan. Bayer Leverkusen at the moment, 41 games unbeaten this season, closing in on their first ever Bundesliga title and their first trophy in 31 years. A behemoth of a German football club this season. The best club basically in Europe and uh, and West Ham have got to overcome them to reach a Europa League semi-final once again. Kevin, how does it feel at the moment to be supporting a club who are frankly the envy of the whole of Europe? <laughs> it feels good uh, finally getting there where I wanted to be all the time uh, since I'm a fan of this this club like since 1997 um, this is my club and it's amazing this season is, is, is a crazy feat that we are that we are having right now so many unbeaten games um, called being being called a behemoth actually <laughs> was was not in my vocabulary uh, in the beginning of the season but I was very optimistic that we could have a great season, but then again, and I'm looking right at you, every Leverkusen fan, no, um, we haven't won anything yet. So we have we have 40 games unbeaten streak, it's it's a nice thing, it's it's great to have it. But I mean, it's quite nice. It's yeah, yeah. quite nice, <laughs> but we, we haven't won any title right now, so this is the next step. Right, we haven't won any titles right now. All you've got to do this weekend is equal Bayern Munich and Stuttgart's result. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're playing Werder Bremen, Bayern correct. Munich are playing against your bitter local rivals Cologne, yep. and who have Stuttgart got? Frankfurt. Frankfurt, Eintracht Frankfurt, West Ham fans will of course know Eintracht Frankfurt very, very well indeed after a Europa League semi-final defeat to the German side a couple of years ago. Now, what are, is it, am I correct or incorrect in saying that you could have won the title before you've even kicked a ball? Yes, if Bayern and Stuttgart lose on Saturday, we will be champions. I hope that does not happen because yeah. for our first national championship, it would be nice to have like the moment when the referee ends the game and you can just let everything that go. Release. Yeah, that yeah, release, yeah, yeah. and that's what we're working for as fans, as a club, uh, for the whole year. So, I hope, I really hope. I mean, how many games are left in the season? Five after that. Okay, five. Sorry, go on, carry on. So, Cologne can do one thing right <laughs> by beating Bayern because I want to have Stuttgart on the second place because they're playing such such a great football. Yeah. Uh, I think Leverkusen and Stuttgart are the two best German teams. So, it would be nice to have them come in at, at second. So, Bayern losing, Stuttgart winning. Leverkusen winning, everybody's happy. <laughs> everybody's happy, <laughs> indeed. Well, look, I mean, you, there's there's five games left. Let's be honest, you've won it, haven't you? Yes. You have won it, exactly. <laughs> there we go, finally. I thought we'd yes. extract it. Sure. But, <laughs> how does it feel? Because you've never won the title before. It's very, not being funny, but similar sort of yeah, stature of club um, as West Ham have historically been around 30,000 seats in your, your stadium. I know West Ham have, have changed that in the, in the last few years with the move to London Stadium, but no major trophy for 31 years. West Ham's before the Conference League last year was 1980. You know, even longer uh, period of time starved of success. We have never won the English top flight either. It's a very... It's the, the equivalent comparison could be West Ham winning the Premier League. We saw it with Leicester in England in 2016 and what a remarkable achievement that was. How does it feel being a lifelong fan of Leverkusen? Are you sort of, have you got your head around it yet? Because I imagine you, you just seem a lot more put together than I would be if West Ham were on the verge of winning the title. Oh, you just keep talking and you're making me cry. Um, <laughs> no, really. Um, sometimes I, I, I go through my apartment and then I just stand still because some moment from this season is popping up in my head. And I'm like having goosebumps and not these days right now. I'm so happy that we're playing against you on Thursday because I could not imagine a week without a game in between last week's game and Sunday mm. because emotions are running so high. Yesterday I had tennis practice and I had our um, our uh, club song on. I don't know what the English word is. Anthem. Our, our anthem. Yeah. And I started crying. 
-hmm. immediately because yeah. it's such an emotional emotional affair for us for all of us in Leverkusen because it's not only overcoming like 22 years after we had those this 2002 season where we had three second places like in the Champions League in the in the DFB Pokal and in the championship but also 2000 with Unterhaching where we lost it in the last minute but all we have to overcome as a club because we have the the buyer thing in the background so oh, we'll uh, we are not okay while. good yeah, good yeah. um so it's a lot it's a lot and it's i've been told every other team in germany hates by leverkusen so that will come up when we talk about the buyer thing as okay you put it. okay <laughs> no but but it's it's a whole lot of emotion um but but right now i want to be professional <laughs> and I want to be. <laughs> I want to like be the manager. Content. One game at a time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Step of course. by step. We need to be. We need to be patient. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's sure. the mentality. Well, look, um, uh, all of you guys watching, listening at home. Some of you hopefully are on your way out to Germany as we speak. If not, you're at home in England or anywhere around the world, looking forward to this absolute thriller of a football game that our club, that Kevin's club, have got coming up on on Thursday night. Just uh, give give you a little idea of what's coming up in this video in this podcast uh, Chabi Alonso will talk about the massive impact he's had in Leverkusen on the short time he's there and how Kevin's going to feel when he inevitably goes to Real Madrid in 12 months time we'll talk about their star players of course the players West Ham have got to look out for Victor Boniface, Grimaldo, Frimpong and uh, a much a lesser spotted Granit Xhaka who uh, apparently Arsenal fans will tell you Declan Rice is so much better than him, but it looks like Xhaka might actually win a trophy this season, while Declan Rice almost certainly is not going to. Uh, I want to ask Kevin how scared he is of losing those players next season, why it is exactly, as I've mentioned already, that other teams in Germany hate Leverkusen so much. We'll chat a little bit about the Ultras, what West Ham fans can expect coming to Germany over the next couple of days and to be quite honest I'm going to beg Kevin to give us all a little bit of hope somehow that West Ham can overcome uh, Bayer Leverkusen this week and be the first team to end that unbeaten streak. What a record, a history-making achievement that would be for the Hammers if we could do that. So loads coming up. We'll talk about the game, of course. Any weaknesses, formation, set-up, star players, atmosphere, loads to come. So stay tuned on the video. Kevin, like I said, only one place to start, really, and it is with a chubby... Alonso, I think it's less than two years that he's been with, with you. Well, you were 17th in the Bundesliga when he took over in October 23, I believe. What a remarkable... Uh, October 22, sorry. Yeah. What a remarkable achievement and what a remarkable things he's been doing with the club. There were some absolutely ridiculous West Ham fans, particularly the David Moyes Out Brigade, who were saying, yeah, get rid of him, we'll bring in Chabi Alonso. Ridiculous notion that he would come to West Ham. But just talk to me a little bit about um, the man who you'll no doubt love forever and will get a statue outside the ground soon. Full gold. Um, no, um, at the beginning I was skeptical as well because we had an experiment like that with Sami Hupier yeah. uh, a few years ago, and that didn't. Just loads of ex Liverpool players. <laughs> yeah, Liverpool, yeah, yeah. Liverpool, Leverkusen. <laughs> I had a I had a funny moment in in uh, on uh, I think I was on vacation in Spain, and we were playing Champions League against Man United, and I was watching at a at a pub, and there were two two British uh, a British British uh, couple, older. And I was like having time of my life because I think Rolf has scored against Menu, beautiful <laughs> goal. And I was like going crazy. And she was like, who's playing? Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool. And her husband like, no, Leverkusen. Ah, Leverkusen. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, ah, it's yeah. close. Um, no, but to be honest, um, at the beginning I was a bit skeptical because um, the way we played didn't change immediately. Right. Um, but during the, the summertime and with every player that left the club but also that came to the club um, my confidence grew 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 and because I know and everybody knows I think that Xabi Alonso is maybe one of the best um, defensive midfielders of all time yeah no doubt about it and he learned from the best coaches of all time no doubt about it and if you take the best elements of that 
and maybe get rid of the worst elements of that in the beginning, you will have a perfect coach actually. Yeah, yeah. And this is what we see now. It's the it's the mixture of of the the class that he's bringing as a person, but also as a footballer to the to the squad. When you see like training sessions where he's playing the long balls <laughs> and he's playing the yeah. freaking long balls, yeah, yeah. Uh, like like it was yesterday better, that he was playing active. Yeah, sure, too. yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then you have players like you 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 mentioned Granit Xhaka. You you have Alessandro Grimaldo, who's, who's amazing. Um, and we got him for free, actually. So everything in the club is working towards the, the big goals. And Xabi Alonso is someone who brings that mentality to the club that was missing yeah. in the club, actually. Um, like the winning mentality that he had from Liverpool, from Bayern as well, so from Real Madrid. Everywhere he went, he went to win. Mm. And that is something that he implemented. And if it wasn't for Xavi and Iniesta ahead of him <laughs> he's like he's, he's one of he ends up as one of Spain Busquets of course but he ends Absolutely. up as one of Spain's most decorated yep. international midfielders as well probably doesn't get the recognition recognition maybe deserves uh, he will he will one day midfield. yeah well, yeah of course yeah but for one of the greatest midfielders of all time because yep. he's behind those two you know who, who somehow hit even higher True. um levels than he did during his playing career but look I mean he, he, he turned down the opportunity to take over from Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. It seemed like a match made in heaven when Jurgen Klopp announced that he was leaving at the end of the season. He has turned it down and the cynics or the realists will suggest and are suggesting that it's because he's lining himself up to take over from Carlo Ancelotti when his time at Real Madrid comes to an end. What do you make of... It's just sort of the way of modern football now when... Any time, any team who isn't one of the established cartel get a good player or a good manager, the conversation boringly switches to, oh, when will it be that this person leaves for a bigger and better club? So I'm sorry to do that to you, oh, no. but when will Chabi Alonso leave Bayer Leverkusen for a bigger and better club? 25, <laughs> yeah. like you said, in 12 months. Um, but I have a question for you. Would you like to be the first coach that goes to Liverpool after Jurgen Klopp? Absolutely not. No, definitely same as That's it. Unai Emery at Arsenal after Wenger, David Moyes at Manchester United you don't after want West Ham. It. Yeah, um, Graham Potter, slightly dissimilar thing, but with the new era at Chelsea, I, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah, it seems a sensible so move. You have you had basically three options apart from Leverkusen. The one was Bayern Munich. It's too chaotic. I wouldn't go there. And he's like, he's an honourable dude. Yeah. So he wouldn't go straight to the opposition in Germany for the first step. Liverpool, as I told you. You will you will not be you you don't want to be the first one after club because mm. it only can end in misery yeah, actually, sure. and the third one was Salah's likely to leave. It's going to be a transitional yeah. period. Klopp knows what he's doing, yeah. like Ferguson did, leaving at the right time. Yeah. You feel yeah, go on. So and then Real Madrid and they extended the contract with Ancelotti, and that was my sign that he will be leaving in 25 because yeah. the Ancelotti extension was for two years, and I think there is an exit clause after one year if Xavi wants to go there, yeah. and it's totally fine. It's totally fine. First of all, he could have left this summer and he would still got his golden statue yeah, because sure, it's, yeah, yeah. it's amazing what he's done. Second, having the opportunity for him to do one relatively relaxed Champions League season with Leverkusen yeah, yeah. and the way the players work with him and we get a few players in the summer, it's, it's, it's the best option for him because after that he will go to Real Madrid, will be a great coach will be an experienced coach in Champions League. He can take one or two players with him even. Yeah, we yeah. get a lot of money. Everybody wins. Yeah, so yeah. it's 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 fine for us actually. He's a, he's a great he's a great man and the explanation he did why he was staying in Leverkusen because some media outlet said it was a sensation that he's staying in Leverkusen. Yeah. Let's be honest, he has a contract until 2026. Yeah. So there is no need for him or for the club to let him leave. Yep. But it's al always like the new way in Leverkusen, it's like gentlemen working together. Yeah, yeah, so sure. if he wanted to leave, they would have a talk. Certain clubs, I know he's interested in going, but um, one year and yeah, maybe we can, we can reach even more goals with him in this year. Ba the same again. Build a good foundation for the club and everybody will will have their way in the end. Absolutely. Maybe you build a dynasty. Who knows? I wouldn't go that far, <laughs> actually. But uh, Dortmund has shown it uh, like yeah. 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when Klopp uh, won their first championship. They were even won the second championship. So 
let's win the first one before the second one, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't but get ahead of yourself. No, but but um, you you have to be honest. Every year in Germany will be everything but Bayern mm. in the beginning, yeah. and if you can build on that foundation you have this year, um, I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to to have play a good role next year as well. But um, that's in the future. Quite. Well, look, what, what, what's been your, your, obviously, Chubby Alonso, a huge part of it. What's been the secret to your success? Is just, just sort of run us through some of the star players. We'll get onto your tactics and set up a little bit later when we talk about the game. But who, who are the players who've really, I've mentioned Boniface, Grimaldo and Frimpong there, Granite Xhaka as well. Um, you're sort of quietly going about his business and, and getting plaudits from all corners. But who have, who have been the real standouts for you and who will be the big big threats for West Ham this week, this season, and what do they bring? First of all, I want to preface this by saying that the whole club is the is the main reason why we are having this success right now because there is a change. Are you the PR officer for Bayer Leverkusen? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, but it's something I, I criticized a lot over the years and uh, some of the club or some people in the club didn't like it that I criticized it, but I think right now I, I reap the benefits and uh, I think that I was... Are you taking credit for Bayer Leverkusen winning the yes, first... Yes, a little bit, a lol, actually, yeah, yeah. a little bit, a little bit, just for myself, for my <laughs> ego, okay? We are ego-driven people in the media business. <laughs> no, but, but actually, it's, it's something I wanted for all those years. It's the mentality that you can win something and yet you can be strong on who you are. And I was missing that for years. And having this now... Like from the top down, like we have Fernando Caro, who is the boss. Then we have Simon Rolfes, who is the, the sporting director, the sporting manager. Then we have Xabi and all the players and all the staff. Everything is working together, the fans as well with the club. Yeah. But at the end, the, the players will, will, have to, will have to do it. So, of course, we have to name Florian Wirtz. Torn ACL uh, a year ago, um, 19 years old. Nobody can predict how a 19-year-old will recover from a torn ACL. Sure, yeah. Nobody. And he's even better. He's getting better. He's getting better and better. And so for those who, who don't know him watching or yeah. listening, what position does he play? What does he offer? Central midfield, yeah. like coming from, from... I mean, in our system, it's, it's difficult for him because there are changing dis positions like yeah. all the time, very basically. Fluid. Yeah, very fluid. And uh, he's the creative mastermind uh, of this squad. Um, well, it's amazing to see him play. I say amazing a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Need to stop that. Um, no, but it's 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 great to see him grow. It's great to see him him evolve um, in a way nobody could have predicted after the injury. Yeah. Um, but but one of the main players I think that came to the club is is Granny Chaka. Yeah. I will never, never in a million years, be able to comprehend how Arsenal fans could hate on this guy. No, really. <laughs> Arsenal fans are a special breed. Of yeah, they are. They, I mean, they can find negatives about anyone. Hey, it's amazing. Until um, they win three games of football in a row, and then they're convinced they're the best I team who's ever it. played football ever. Yeah. When they they'll come third this season, undoubtedly, but they'll still have you believe they're the best, the greatest football team anyone has ever seen. Yeah. So yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much. No, it's like it's in like with Arsenal fans say. It's like with Kai Havertz, who's also coming from from Leverkusen. Yeah. Like I don't know how you can be so cruel, but okay. It's their prerogative, it's okay. But what uh, Granit Xhaka brings to the table is um, the oversight, uh, the mentality, the quality. Uh, it's, I, cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough. This man is the brains of the operation. Yeah, yeah. He's the man in the middle who has every, every string is in his hands yep. during the game. And you will see it just... Just for you, if you are in the stadium tomorrow, um, just take three, four minutes just observing him. He already, he also grew from his time in Arsenal yeah. right now to Leverkusen because he's now even much more in power yeah. in the team. So um, it's great to have him on the squad and I think it's it's one of the, the crucial positions we 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 optimised with yeah, him. Yeah. Boniface and Granado, uh, Granado and Boniface in particular yeah. is a player who <coughs> West Ham fans will... Well, I, th I think there was a, there was you know quite strong links West Ham fans um, or West Ham sort of tried to bring Boniface in before in our perennial lifelong search for a decent striker, which means we don't have 
406-year-old Mikhail Antonio up front, which we've uh, yeah, been trying to look for a replacement for him for years and years and years now. Just hasn't worked. We've tried Haller, we've tried Skamaka, uh, and we've tried a load of other rogues in between. Boniface is another one on the list, as long as my arm of centre-forwards that West Ham have been linked with or tried to sign. I think there is actually... Uh, some legs in the Boniface talk um, but he's been in smashing out for you as well this season and uh, yeah, Absolutely. banging him in yeah um, I have to crush your dreams I think it was always Leverkusen mm. always yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> right after he played last year with uh, saint Gilois. it's um, becoming apparent against why us. that is yeah but he was like the next day I think he posted an Instagram story with the uh, with Leverkusen shirt on yeah, yeah, and yeah. you don't do it if you if you don't have any intentions and um what he brings to the table as well is the 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 physical strength with the wild it's it's he plays a wild game yeah. he plays a wild game and sometimes you're like oh and another one and another one and another one he has 20 20 tries uh, before he has his first goal but he tries in and the Mikhail Antonio mold <laughs> that is what you've described <laughs> there. yeah yeah but, but Mikhail Antonio 2.0 <laughs> that is yeah but if he finds his ground, and will he will become more efficient over the years. And I hope he stays injury-free. He had a long injury right now. He's coming back from it. Um, he will be a great striker. He will be a great striker. Also, two torn ACLs in, in, in young age. Um, big dude. Big dude. Um, but I think he will be a star for sure. And Grimaldo, uh, the last one you said. Um, what he... His delivering is unique yeah. in in a way for a left left defender um, both offensive and defensive is is working great with him but the free kicks are a threat right now yeah, yeah. so we had we didn't have this for years uh, we thought we had it with Kerem Demirbay but didn't work out like this I think the last one was Hakan Chalanolu yeah, yeah. who, who could have uh, who was able to to those kinds of free kicks yeah, yeah. but um, you see that Grimaldo is also like the the right hand man in a way for Xabi yeah. because speaking Spanish yeah, 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 um, sure. being able to communicate very directly with the player is a is a huge asset yeah. uh, he's also one like with Wirtz I think Alonso will leave the club with Wirtz and Grimaldo to Real Madrid yeah. and um, those are basically his two most important players Aside from Chaka, yeah, yeah, but sure. Chaka is different because he's older. He's he's. I don't think he will no, do another right. step yeah, to, this is to Real Madrid. The, 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 the beginning of the end. Of yes, life for him. yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, but sure. Uh, yeah, those those players that came are, are great. And we we had with with Diaby who left the club. I think the the right per people left the club as well. So yeah, yeah, it's a sure. mixture in the end. Well, look, this is a question I was um, both looking forward to asking you and a little bit apprehensive about. Um, Basti Red, who's a, uh, a friend of the podcast. Um, Not so my friend. <laughs> those of you um, who have been watching the channel and listening to the podcast for a long time will remember, of course, uh, the video we did out in Eintracht Frankfurt before that famous semi-final, heartbreaking as it was. But uh, yeah, great, great content with Basti then we've kept in touch and I was texting him in the build up to this game as I did uh, with the Freiburg game recently as well and he said to me the whole of the Bundesliga is cheering for you you've got to beat them the whole of Germany hates them were his words to yeah. me now German fan culture is widely admired uh, across the continent particularly uh, in England for its 50 plus one fan ownership model everyone uh, of a West Ham persuasion was delighted uh, the away game at Freiburg recently when tickets were 30 pounds it's, it's wonderful for such a big game but just tell me a little bit um, about what the beef is among uh, <laughs> across the rest of fans of the Bundesliga with Bayer Leverkusen how much do you pay for a ticket here <laughs> I think uh, 75 euros my ticket for today okay. was, tomorrow, okay. I mean. Yeah. Normal prices, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately. Um, well, I know Basti as well, and I know cheers, where... Cheers, Basti. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Yeah. Huh? Or Gude, uh, as we say. Uh, no, but... Um, I mean, the thing is that some people tend to throw 
Leverkusen into the same basket as they would throw like Leipzig and like, so Hoffenheim yeah. and maybe. Wolfsburg is a different different animal for me as well. I know that Basti has a huge problem with Wolfsburg <laughs> and um, I don't, so I will not I would rather not comment on this. You'll have to excuse the large JCB digger who's yeah. just uh, delivering a load of leads. It's the I dirt that is. Basti brought. <laughs> and it's loading, yeah. unloading here. Live um, agricultural work Live and living on the color. banks of the Rhine yeah. in sun shining Bonn. No, um, yeah, carry but, on. I'm but sure the, the listeners at home understand this is a live environment. <laughs> yeah. um, the thing is, if you if you look. If you really look closely into the history of Bayer Leverkusen, you will see that the the main club that was created in the early, early, early years, like 1904, was a club from workers at the Bayer factory. So for those of you who don't know, Bayer is a large uh, chemical pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical yeah, company, pharmaceutical company. Um, in Leverkusen. Yes. Yeah, sort of like the hub and the heart of the city yeah. and has been for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the go on, but just give us a little bit of an idea of what where some of that dislike may come from. Because of the of the of the um, the enterprise, who of course, as a marketing tool and as an asset to the outside, wants to have a successful uh, football club, yep. is always investing into this football club, and especially in in very traditionalist German uh, football fan base scene, however you want to call it, yep. um, it's frowned, frowned upon to have a backer like this. Right. And of course, uh, the Bayer AG has invested a lot into the club, especially in the 90s when we are really getting str got strong in the early 2000s when we had the big successes without any titles. And um, on the other side... The, 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 the criticism relates to the you've perhaps exploited a loophole in the 50 plus one yeah we were the loophole fan, we fan were the ownership. loophole we mind it's, it's called the lex leverkusen in the end <laughs> uh, the the exclusion for wolfsburg came because of us but we are the only club that is allowed to have the name Bayer in in the in the name of the club yeah. so this is basically the the exception to the rule and and we made this happen in a way yes but then again the fuss about it, it's like very, to me, it's very like, how do I say it in English? It's its a double standard. Yeah, yeah. Because if you if you look at the results, if you look what we brought to, to German football as a whole, like um, being an ambassador for German football in Champions League, in, in Europa League, um, tell me when I'm telling lies, but it's important that you have clubs like this as well. It's different if you have one rogue investor who's coming in, taking over the club, and pulling his dick out if he <laughs> if he doesn't want to. Sorry about the language. Uh, if he wants to, if he wants to leave, you know what I mean. Yeah. But the 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 enterprise, the buyer enterprise, has always been there and will always be there yeah. until the last day of this club. Or the company. Or the company, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah sure. But but at the end of the day. Uh, I can understand the criticism, but to be honest, I don't listen to that criticism anymore because we are way over that point. And um, it's nice uh, that that some people still live in the past uh, concerning Bayer Leverkusen. <laughs> yeah. There are things that I'm not happy about in yeah. in football. It's totally fine, but um, I would not agree with Basti. I don't think that everybody in Germany hates Bayer Leverkusen. <laughs> it's, Maybe uh, he was exaggerating a bit. As don't be said. as... I know how he means it. Uh, there are a lot. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I think everybody will see at the end of the day that what happens this year, and I, I read an article a few days ago that um, fan initiatives say it's not good for German football that Bayer Leverkusen is the one breaking the yeah, streak. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think most people around Europe are just delighted it's not Bayern Munich. Yeah, quite sure. Honest. It breaks the yeah. idea that the Bundesliga is boring at least for a season. Look, yeah. I, know I don't suppose you're going to be thinking about any of that criticism come this weekend if no. you're celebrating your first ever no. Bundesliga title. So that's totally fine. Listen, I want to move on to a little bit more uh, sort of stuff around around the game, really. And there's been there's been some talk in the the build up to the game. I've obviously been coming out here 
Um, and I got a, a couple of messages, and you get a lot of these sort of things when you go to European away games, given the, you know, the general sort of excitable nature among all the fan base. Um, and there's a there's an ultra scene on the continent, far more so than there is in London. And I've had a couple of messages this week suggesting that um, you know there's going to be some sort of link up between. Uh, Cologne and Leverkusen ultras and there's going to be lots of trouble and lots of violence in the Link city. Link up between Leverkusen and well, Cologne? And, and no. the, one of the messages did say they're not particularly keen on each other. No. But, and I thought, well, they actually hate each other quite passionately. Yeah. But what was the, you get a lot of that and, you know, uh, my dad's sitting over there behind the camera. I think this is perhaps our eighth or ninth, tenth, who knows, European away game over the last few years. And every single one, uh, Eintracht Frankfurt was a little bit hairy, I would say, but not so much fans, just robust policing, I would call it. Hmm. Uh, but other than that, we've had a brilliant time. And most West Ham, or almost all West Ham fans have been on top form, top behaviour. There's never really been too much aggro or trouble, bar a couple. I know some stories at games um, that I wasn't at where some stuff happened and some stuff went down. But just for anyone watching who's perhaps on the way out who might have received a similar message or, you know, sort of concerned or worried or anything, well, just talk to us a little bit about the, the Leverkusen fan culture and, and perhaps if there's any sort of credence in, in any of those sort of supposed threats that have come out no uh, first of all I, I would uh, advise you to choose your sources wisely <laughs> uh, there will never be any sort of link up between uh, Leverkusen and Cologne ultras against anyone um, I don't think and as an away fan British fans we had uh, I think was it who was it a few years ago who we had in Europa League I don't remember right now but uh, it was fine Everything was fine. Uh, you can wear your shirts, you can wear your jerseys, you can wear your hats. Um, I mean, of course, it's the same when we go to Britain. Don't go to certain pubs. Uh, yeah, don't course, go near yeah. near like the hardcore ultra pub. But that's common sense. <laughs> you you <laughs> yeah, just yeah, don't yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but I think that that as a as a Brit and as a West Ham fan, you can move much more freely in Leverkusen than you could move. As a Leverkusen fan in, in London, sometimes, uh, sometimes. Yeah, I think I I I, th I find a lot of. I, lot I don't of I, I don't see that I don't no, see but that. I, I, I know stories of legitimate. You know, I know when West Ham went to Dynamo Zagreb, it was a not an enjoyable experience for lots mm. of the West Ham fans who went out there. But on the whole, I think a lot of this stuff gets blown up. That's a little sad. Bit. It does there was the obvious scenes we were in. Uh, Seville when, when some Eintracht Frankfurt fans who played Real Betis the night before Dad and I were actually at the game and there were some, some ugly scenes in one of the bars in the city but they're isolated pockets of incidents so I thought I'd just sort of get your... Um, I don't think in Leverkusen you will have to, to have any fear on that because we are so so much within ourselves right now um, <laughs> Yeah, bothered about winning the league Yeah, yeah um, but, but also we I think if I mean, there. Okay, you have some clubs where it can get iffy, but I don't see West Ham being one of those clubs because uh, I have not seen anything happening in during the Europa League season this year, and I don't know. No. I don't see any problems now. No, I, I'd just like to congratulate you, by the way, on your use of the word iffy. I think uh, <laughs> any, anyone for whom English isn't their first language who's using the word iffy <laughs> should be congratulated <laughs> and commended. Thank you. Look, I, I, I think it's one of those things. Ultra, ultra fan culture, um, I think, is a bit misconstrued sometimes in England where it's just yeah. assumed they're yobs and hooligans and thugs. Um, but yeah, I mean... Once again, uh, not particularly worried about coming. We're sitting on the the banks of the Rhine here. The sun is shining. It's <laughs> now the sun is out Seville again. Yeah, all yeah. over again. What a city that was. What an experience that was. What a memory that was. And let's hope uh, that the European journey isn't ending here for West Ham. But uh, as always, and as has always been my stance on these things, you've got to treat everyone as if it's going to be your last because it's West Ham United after all. And who knows it very well. Could be, but look, um, what can uh, West Ham fans expect? It's Wednesday, we got in nice and early, the 6am out of Stansted this morning to Dortmund, 
and a little bit of a train journey into Cologne at lunchtime. This should go out Wednesday afternoon slash evening, so there'll be fans travelling over on Thursday morning, Wednesday night, watching, you know, if they're not coming to the game, all over the world and, and certainly up and down the UK. But those fans who are coming out, uh, to Germany, the vast majority of them staying in Cologne, just a 20 minute or so train journey from Leverkusen. I think one of my colleagues who'd been to Leverkusen before to report on a game described it as a pokey little town just off the motorway. Do not stay there, go and stay in Cologne. But what can uh, any West Ham fans coming out watching this or listening to this podcast expect from uh, this wonderful part of the world? Ha! Um, well, not much actually, <laughs> because no, you only see the the train station and and you go right to the stadium You've like a 10, 15 already? minutes work. I mean, Cologne. What's to see in Cologne? Come to Bonn. Bonn is much more, much nicer than Cologne actually. Um, You're on the tourist board for Bonn and the as PR well. Board yes, for everything, Bayer everything. Yeah. You know that. Um, no, but uh, to be honest, I mean. Um, how much do we really see of a of a city of a specific city when we are there for a football game? You oh, know, this is true. and um, especially when you when you fly in, fly out, uh, when you spend a night in Cologne, it's totally normal uh, for an away fan to to stay in Cologne because Leverkusen isn't. It, it has very very nice spots. It's a different city, as in it is a worker city at, after all, and um, you will you will see a great stadium. I'm really proud of the stadium because um, although it's only 30,000 seats, it feels bigger. Yeah. It feels bigger because it's very nice constructed. Um, always, I, I always get compliments from people who come to the stadium as it is clean. It smells nice. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it is. It is. And... Um, it's just a great experience, I think, um, to come to Leverkusen as well because you will see great a great football match, I hope. I hope it will be better than what I really expect because I don't expect much yeah. from, from Thursday, actually. But um, no, don't, don't uh, hassle yourself walking through Leverkusen because for the nice parts you, you should have a car. Yeah. Um, so, but for those just coming and staying in Cologne, where should they be heading to uh, for a couple of beers? If hey, in Cologne. The day on Just go into a nice brow house. Uh, enjoy. If you if you want to go near the station, go to the Fru. The, the Fru. 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 How do we spell that? F R U uh, with umlaut. Yeah. And that's H. The, for for those who don't know, that's the two dots. That's the two dots <laughs> on the U. Uh, Fru. Um, you will call it. Um, it's a nice nice uh, brewery uh, brew brow house where you can have some beers and and good food actually. Yeah. Um, and it's near the central station. Yeah. So, so, the, so what were you and also, Fru is a sponsor of Bayer Leverkusen. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go, yeah, yeah. Now I'm also on the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what, what can you know? What, you mentioned about the stadium already. Thirty thousand in there. Obviously, yeah. it must be the, the most amazing time to go to home games at the moment. But can, can those fans going to the game seats in the corner? Of the ground, of course, um, above the, the two tiers, over two tiers, I think. But what atmosphere-wise, uh, obviously, obviously a sellout the game, I assume. But yep. what can, uh, yeah, what, what atmosphere-wise, what can West Ham fans expect? Uh, I would say a couple of years ago, it would have been um, an atmosphere that is different from what we're having now, uh, because right now uh, the whole of the stadium will be active um, for Leverkusen, uh, because over the years the the amount of sometimes like subsidized tickets and also free tickets and stuff like that. Um, many away fans now it's it's a much more a Leverkusen heavy crowd yeah. because it's 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 a good time to be a Leverkusen yeah, sure, fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it will be a special atmosphere because playing under the lights um, European football is always special. Doesn't matter if you have the big Champions League anthem or the creepy. Europa League <laughs> the anthem. Europa League one's so much better. It's West Ham fans absolutely love that now. Uh, I don't know. I, I want I want to get used to the Champions League anthem again, <laughs> to be honest, because the the drumming 
gets me nauseous. <laughs> West Ham haven't been overly exposed to the. Uh, yeah, Champions I can imagine. Run, so I think we'll stick with the. Yeah. <laughs> now we're also on the UEFA uh, <laughs> yeah. marketing uh, committee. <laughs> no, but uh, it will be a good atmosphere. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because it is a great time. Uh, we are so happy right now, and um, it's what we bring to the to the ground um, as fans. Uh, big voices good hands yeah. and hopefully a win for Leverkusen yeah 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 well uh, yeah I was, I was I was quite impressed I went to the Freiburg away game not much of a spectacle of a football game but there are loads of their fans uh, in the game nice and early behind the goal created a really good atmosphere so yeah, uh, yeah I mean the Eintracht Frankfurt the spectacle the, they produced when we went there for the Europa League semi-final was one of the my most lasting memories of uh, of football and the, the spectacle they produced. So, um, yeah, enjoy. Leverkusen is somewhere in the middle, I would say. Yeah, somewhere in the yeah, middle. Yeah, so somewhere above Frankfurt. Freiburg. Frankfurt is is good. We, it's it's can't a good atmosphere. Compete, it's a great. Yeah. No, I don't. I wouldn't one say can't compete, <laughs> but uh, it's it's one of the best in Germany. I would yeah. say, at the best of times, it is maybe the best. Although I, I should not say that too loud <laughs> um, but uh, yeah I think we are somewhere right now we are somewhere in the middle great stuff great stuff right I've put it off for long enough now I think I'm going to have to ask you uh, about the game and about the football I want to know first of all um, you know is there is there any chink of weakness you've got first of all tell me the four games that you've drawn in the Bundesliga this year you've won 20 Eight, yeah. drawn four. Yeah. Who are the four games you've drawn? What are the four games you've drawn? I think Dortmund was the first one. Yeah. Then we had, uh, I think, Freiburg yeah. in the first leg. Then we had Munich as well in the first leg. But this was a win, as Dortmund was a, lo a loss for us. Right. It was a draw loss. And then we had Mönchengladbach, which was a clear loss right. in the second. Because otherwise we would be champion right now. No, right, right, right. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's so crazy. I just, uh, I, I, all I will say, and loads of West Ham fans watching this or listening to yeah. this will say, if you're drawing with Freiburg, we beat them 5-0 at home, you are drawing with them, therefore West Ham must be better than you. Should we stop the internet? That's, ma that's right maths. No, that's that's, I don't know. <laughs> I was never good at maths. That's <laughs> um, why. That's why I, I come. I come around the corner with logic. <laughs> and uh, no. But, but, but on a serious note, then yeah. you know, in those games where in any games you have struggled, one thing West Ham fans have, have been quick to look at is the fact that you played Carabag in the last round. And let's be honest, I don't want to say fortunate, but you left it late to qualify. You yeah. conceded four goals against Carabag over two legs and I think there's probably a little bit of uh, you know um, I don't know unfair belittling of Carabag from West Ham fans because most football fans don't really understand but to concede four against Carabag West Ham fans trying to look for any chink of hope uh, would suggest that oh well they're there to be got at they can concede goals you know surely West Ham are better than than Carabag but this season when you have played badly although it still hasn't resulted in a defeat where have those weaknesses come what have they look like I think the biggest weakness is when we are not efficient in the beginning when we have the few chances we have we tend to be prone to concede right. um, like we did with Hoffenheim mm -hmm. a few a few games ago um, there is always the risk that this happens uh, be it through a corner or a free kick or uh, penalty um, but also just just uh, a good uh, counter-attack um, but then again it's also a big strength because I like to part a weakness with a strength to to pair them up yeah. um, that all those last-minute wins we have are not fluke wins well, in the end because yeah. West Ham had a few of them this season, and lots of our David Moyes out fans will tell you that they were flukes. But no. I'm, 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 I'm sort of with you that if it doesn't happen by accident. That stuff, if it happens it? once or twice, maybe you can call it a fluke. But if it happens five, six times during a season, to, during a long season, uh, over different uh, uh, championships or, or cups stuff, because it happens, it happened in Leverkusen yeah. over three cups right now. Um, it's 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 part of the plan, and um, that is why I think that if we if we are able to like we did it against Düsseldorf in the in the in the German Cup uh, last week, if we are able to score 
early. Yeah. I don't see, I don't see, let's say, huge chances for West Ham. Because we'll be happy with that in the first leg. David Moyes is happy to have 20% of the ball and no one have that's, a shot on that's, goal. That's <laughs> actually interesting that you told me when we when we did a little walk with my dog here um, that we um, that you play actually play the style that everybody seems to play against us, yeah. but just all the time. Yeah. So um, it will be interesting if we if we can put our patient game on against West Ham as we do no as we normally do yep. if we can I think that um, what you need to do or what West Ham needs to do is to score every time they get a chance to it's easy to say because football works like this yeah. we are quite clinical though without Jared Bowen I think that's going to be a miss but we can yeah we are able to do I'm that. actually happy that he is not there yeah but without <laughs> with Michael Antonio up front he's the Victor Boniface but 20 years older of West Ham where he, he'll take 40 chances and one of them will go in. So If he gets past Jonathan Tarr. Well, uh, exactly, quite. Yeah. Well, let, right just, just, just talk to me then. Um, you know, What are you expecting team news-wise? Have you got any injuries or suspensions oh. that will be a benefit check that. to West Ham? What sort of, you know, <coughs> talk to us a little bit about the, the, the tactics, formation and, and how you think Xabi Alonso will, uh, will approach the game. And then that will be it and I'll ask you for a score prediction. I'm until you're talking absolute nonsense and then we'll say goodbye for this podcast episode. I'm, I'm now also the uh, the Apple committee member. <laughs> um, are you, on a are Twitter you channel, on a waiting for X team channel. News, live team news? Is I this thought the press conference was... Uh, ah, the press conference has been. But there are no uh, injuries. We have no injuries. Um, the whole squad fit, is, squad yeah, fully fit, oh which is which is which is crazy as well. That oh no, one Adam Lojek has yeah. unfortunately uh, got injured uh, last weekend. Um, so I think we will see. Uh, Where Palas does he play? What's his position? Um, like behind the striker. Okay, right. Um, but he was much more or less uh, a substitute anyway. Right. Um, I think we will see uh, Palacios back in the in the first eleven. Um, he was injured, and Boniface I think will be playing from the beginning as well. Um, otherwise, I don't see any changes in the in the static of the game or in the in the structure. Like uh, three. So how does that look for West Ham fans? It's like because what do you have all the ball? Do you, are you attacking out wide? Yeah. What are you, what are you doing? How so we are you have winning and being so successful. We have uh, uh, three defenders. Then the two two wide defenders will basically be midfielders, and we have the two two on the six, and then it's it's the changing of the positions in the front. And we tend to go wide, and we tend to play a wide game because we have Frimpong and Grimaldo who both can like run up and down, up and down, up and down, no yeah. matter how how often they need to do that. Yeah. And hopefully, have good crosses. Oftentimes, like uh, like pass crossing, yeah. not really much like high crossing. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, and especially getting the. What West Ham needs to do is not give too much room to the two midfielders that we have in front, like Wirtz and whoever is playing next to him. Uh, Boniface will, will, of course, try to do that and yep. try to be like the target man, the target man yeah, yeah. in the front. So I think this will be the, the way we play uh, also on Thursday. Well, how will, how, how will Chabi, before I get the score prediction off you, we're about to wrap up for this... Uh, wonderful little chat in the, on the banks of the Rhine in sunny Bonn. <laughs> but just, just how will uh, how will Chabi Alonso approach the game, and how are Leverkusen fans approaching the game? Obviously, being away for the second leg is always a disadvantage. West Ham, one of our most famous European nights, was beating Seville at home after a defeat away, and the, the sense very much is among Hammers fans, me included. If we only lose by one, as we did with Freiburg in the last round, obviously less of an achievement to take them back to London and, and beat them convincingly there. But how will, will Leverkusen, how are Leverkusen fans approaching the game? What do they want to see out of tonight? And how do you think Xabi Alonso and the team will? Um, I think we want to see everything we've seen all season long, um, which is a very patient, a very possessive game so we take possession of the ball we play the game we don't want to destruct the game we want to construct the game yep. 
And this is basically what Xavi Alonso is doing. We are doing a construction of football in our Whereas game. Some would argue that David Moyes is doing a destruction of football. So if construction <laughs> and me, destruction that, come together, me, <laughs> you in for a treat. Yeah, the, t- t- <laughs> the Thursday night's game stinks of a nil-nil, doesn't it? Actually, actually yes, actually, yes. Um, we, we don't have high-scoring games uh, at the moment, so we won 1-0 uh, on Saturday. Um, we had a good one in the Cup, but that was also because Dusseldorf is playing second league, so... You can you cannot really get that uh, comparison, um, but in the end, it's all about possession. It's all about being able to um, to to be the master of the game much more than being mastered. Yeah. And um, this is what's happening because you have a game like that, you play 90 minutes, and in the 93rd minutes, Leverkusen will score. Yeah, yeah. I mean, West Ham have done that our own plenty of times this season. David Moyes has actually become the master of appearing to be mastered and then actually being the ultimate master at the end. Do you want to say that David Moyes is the British Xabi Alonso? I think, no, I think more David Moyes is like the British Jose Mourinho, I think. Oh, no. That's the mould he's in. Oh, no, not again. (laughs) Not again. Not again (laughs) against Rome last year. Exactly, and that was your (sighs) own doing. I think I'm quietly confident. I've been saying it to anyone (laughs) who will listen. I think the fact we're away from home first helps, especially given the way that David Moyes and West Ham play. I will be stunned if West Ham don't come away from the game on Thursday night. Um, with within a goal of Leverkusen. I've been saying a 2-1 mm. defeat, a Tom, an ugly Thomas Suchek header uh, will be West Ham's mm. goal, two from Leverkusen. And then I think if we go back to London Stadium with a goal in it, it, it it's anyone's game regardless of how good you're playing. I do think there's a lot of underestimation uh, from me and lots of West Ham fans and fans in, in England generally about just how well Bayer Leverkusen are playing this season. But you've got to lose once, haven't you? Ha! <laughs> That's so many came and said the same, <laughs> and they went away crying. <laughs> no, but no, you're right. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm also on the on the on the on the edge um, concerning the the result. I think a two-one is realistic um, because I think you will be able to score, um, but we will win, and then everything depends on what happens on Sunday. I think. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. If we take the championship on Sunday, you must hope that they are still drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't. They will not be because um, Xabi is someone who wants to get the maximum, yeah, and the sure. maximum is to to go go on to the next round and um, have the chance to win win this cup as well. So two one in Leverkusen, and then as you say, I mean, for me personally, I would have liked to be away first and home second. Always like that better, um, but you need to win anyway. Yeah, so as and much is true. I d- I don't see I don't see and I don't want to. I don't want to sound arrogant or anything. Well, you're, you're about over to. anyone who says that always says yes. something arrogant. So go on. We will win the crap out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, honestly, I'm so I'm so. I'm so looking forward to this game because I think now is the time that we can cash in on everything that happened last year in the Europa League and um, it will be a special night of course and um, I'm really looking forward but my, my, my confidence in this team, in this club is, is unbreakable right now yeah. and um, I'm so happy that I can say that with all the gusto and yeah, everything and everything yeah. everything and i'm just happy i'm just yeah. really happy that i can get into in, go into a game like this and hope it will be a great game but in the end think that uh, we will win also we will win the stage yeah yeah well uh, beat the crap out of us is what kevin thinks by leverkusen i shouldn't have said that West Ham. that is be it you know <laughs> as well as i do that's being clipped up and shared everywhere <laughs> absolutely everywhere online if west ham managed to do oh. the unthinkable and get through no. to a second then i deserve it you're a third european semi-final in three years what an achievement that would be Listen, i mean it in good spirits yeah i mean i just well, we can tell that i think good. i'd be i'd be good. much more unbearable than you if west ham were about to win the league 
League uh, and going into a European quarter final. Listen, Kevin Sheeran, German podcaster, Bay Leverkusen fan, all round top bloke. Thank you so much for joining us in this wonderful little setting. Give the bar a plug one more time. Rheinlust, near the near the. Near the yeah, Rhine, yeah, you need to go. Bonn, come here. Just, just come. It's by the bridge. It's lovely. Yep. Uh, beers are nice and reasonable. Um, but that, 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 that will be it. Don't forget, of course, to follow We Are West Ham on all your social media platforms at We Are Underscore West Ham on Twitter, We Are West Ham Pod on Instagram. Subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Hopefully, you are. Follow, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we have lots of uh, try and do lots of sort of live from, particularly for all the European away games, plus all the other week to week content from me and James Jones slide us uh, a DM on any of our platforms Twitter or Instagram if you want and we'll either read them out on the pod or get back to you in person hopefully both but thank you for watching and listening Kevin it's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us on the show thanks so much for giving up your time and coming to join us here to sign off then uh, West Ham v Bayer Leverkusen away quarter final of the Europa League first leg Leverkusen haven't lost in 41 games but David Moyes and his masters of having less than 30% possession and still somehow beating teams uh, it promises to be a clash of styles if nothing else it's got nil-nil written all over it but what is your score prediction for Thursday night? 2-1 for and Leverkusen 2-1 to Leverkusen and ne next Thursday? 2-1 again 2-1, two, one, double 2-1. Two, uh, we'll beat the crap. Just remember that. You said they're going to beat the crap out of us, OK? 2-1 uh, one one isn't really beating the crap out of you. but 4-2 uh. <laughs> and I agree what Kevin's going for. I'm going for a 2-1 defeat for West Ham on Thursday. A 1-0 win at London Stadium. And we do it in extra time and or penalties. One of the two. And what an achievement <laughs> that would be. Thank you to everyone for watching and listening. Thanks, of course, to Miriam Errington Conveyancing, our primary sponsor of the We Are West Ham podcast. Without her generosity, I wouldn't be out here enjoying what what promises to be another historic night for West Ham United. Win, lose or draw. Let's just hope we're still in it. Come next Thursday. Thanks to Kevin. Thanks to you guys for listening at home. Up the Hammers. West Ham are massive. And we'll speak to you next week.